So from the last video, we saw how to set up this message flow. But now the question is, how exactly did we technically do that? And you'll need to know that for troubleshooting. And the answer is that, well, in order to actually understand how we did it, we first need to go back to our topology. So remember, we have these sort of main three servers. This is sort of the three server topology. It's called it's one, two, and three. And then uh, you probably have a Windows server out here of some kind that's called the Windows, that's called the tools client and then optionally you have the server out here well how is it that we're going to get from our our iib toolkit which is here on the tools client somehow to connect into iib we've actually been doing that so that should be fairly straightforward but then remember we also need to get into the database so how are we going to do that okay is that is that iib toolkit coming into the data server or is it the integration bus coming into the data server like that? And then separately, we have all these queues too, right? Well, how is that going to happen? Is that happening from the data server? Or is that really coming in from the toolkit? At first glance, that may not be very obvious. And it turns out that it's actually fairly straightforward. That tools client is really just that. It's just the client that's getting you into the IIB. And that's why when we set up our uh, connections here, let's take a look at that. When we set up our MQ connections, we are connecting into core.ibm.com. So that should be fairly straightforward, right? We are we are connecting into there's our core, right? You know, right there is our core, and we're going from the tools kit into it. And of course, that's into the integration bus. And then from there, what has to happen is the integration bus needs to connect to the data server. It needs to come into DB2. So you don't need to do this, which is what I first did and and wasted a long time trying to figure that out. It's the IBM integration bus that needs to make that connection. And remember, too, that it's really the integration bus that's actually connecting you into the MQ queues, right? So your toolkit out here is really just a connection into that IBM integration bus. And another thing to keep in mind here is that when you are setting up your listener port, if you make any mistake here at all, and the most common one, the one I tend to make, is I'll separate, I'll put in it 4414, substituting that, uh, f which is wrong. You, the listener port for our for our system here is 1414 on IIB. It's not 4414. This is the web interface to the system. And yes, that can be useful, but in our case, we're not really going to use it. This is the web interface. We're, we're not using it when it comes to these MQ connection properties. And of course, we're using the non-SSL, so you may have a different uh, listener port here if you're using SSL. Actually, you will have a different port there. And just to just to confirm that here, you're, you're going to need to set up that same connection information over here on your MQ connection information. Now, the other thing that's interesting and, and sort of uh, new here is that the database has its own data source. Like you, you will not see any grouping, any tab over here on the left that, that talks about the database. It's, it's not there at all. So the question is, well, how on earth is the system, IIB, the toolkit, know anything about the database? And the answer is this data source. And you can figure, you actually can get additional information about how that works by hitting F1. And then give it a second as this comes up because you'll see information specific to the data source. And you can see here actually that you just go to database node and you will notice that the data source, if you scroll down here, is described right here. Let me make that a little bit bigger. Here we go. Okay, and what is the data source? It is the ODBC data source name of the database that contains the tables to which you refer to in the eSQL that is associated with the node. This name identifies the appropriate database as it is known on the system on which the message flow is to run. The integration node connects to this database with user ID and password information that you have supplied in the MQSI set DB parms command, of course. <laughs> if you haven't ever used that, don't worry because this is mostly set up for you on ICFM. So what do I mean by that? Let's take a look here. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is log into the core server. And we're doing that because that is where IIB is located as we just saw. Now the next thing we need to do is figure out which username we need to get into that system. And actually we've done this before, but just to give you an idea, if you grep MQ here, you'll have at least uh, just three usernames to choose from. So we're going to do this SU dash, which it means log in and get all the uh, environment uh, variables from the following user, MQ 
broker. Remember, that's the old name of IIB. And now we're in here. Now what we need to do is locate the MQSI profile file. And why is that? Well, we need to run that so we can get additional environment variables set in there and also some other uh, another, other pieces to what MQ uh, SI, that's the former name, by the way, of the product was called. So that is MQSI here. Uh, IBM MQ series integrator was released back in 1991, uh, 99, I mean, I'll let you read through this, but essentially that's why we're, these commands all start MQSI. Okay, and anyway, that is, uh, the when you run the profile, you are setting up the environment that MQSI, i.e. IIB, needs to run everything uh, properly. So let's run it. You'll, you'll see actually if by doing that alone it will not work and so you need to do the dot notation which means uh, bring in all the environment variables that are available in MQSI profile and if you're ever curious to you there's more information about this on the Knowledge Center but essentially this what this has done is given us a whole bunch more uh, environment variables and really they all mostly start with MQSI and you can see them here now for our purposes the most interesting thing is the uh, sort of scroll down here you'll see the section about ODBC now this is great because this is already set up for us it gives us all the information all the connection details that we need to make a proper ODBC connection into um, the database right so we're, we're talking again remember we're going from uh, the core server which is running IIB into the database the DB2 server and this uh, essentially all the magic happens in these three lines which are there for you so how do we see that? Well, here are a few commands that you can use as a kind of reference. We're going to use this one down here, uh, which is essentially what we've already done. We've done the, done the first two parts. We're going to do this MQSICVP. We're going to give it the name of our broker, which is CFQM.BR. Remember, broker is the former name of the integration server. And then we're going to give it dash in which means give it your DSN information and DSN comes from the world of ODBC and that looks like this so a data source name DSN sometimes known as a database source name and I'll let you read the rest of that if you're interested and if you'd like a step-by-step -step, a sort of lab interface uh, project on how to use ODBC you can look at this page here from the IBM Knowledge Center, which tells you how to connect a database, which is what we're going to do from Linux or Unix, by using the IBM Integration ODBC Database Extender. All this is set up for you, but this is a nice explanation of essentially what has already been done. And really what's interesting for our purposes is this ODBC INI file here in step two and the ODBC inst.ini file as well. So let's look at that. So if I open up that file, the odbc.ini file, you will see the most interesting components. And of the, this is the odbc.ini file showing you all of your connections into the various servers. The various servers in this case is really just DB2. But notice that the data source, the DSN that we've been talking about, is essentially listed right here, CFDB. Now that should ring a bell because we've already looked at it in here when we came into the database, right? When you click on this and you look at the data source, it is listed here as CFDB. Now, capitalization does not matter. You can use upper or lowercase, but sure enough, there it is. And really that makes sense, right? Because our help page said that the data source name was the ODBC data source name of the database. And really that should make sense because we already looked at this, that the toolkit, again, is gonna go into the integration tool, the integration bus. The integration bus makes an ODBC connection over to the data server. And of course, it's the, uh, it's the integration bus that also is talking to these queues. So while that's all well and good, the question is, is that ODBC connection working? Because ODBC connections are somewhat notorious for not always connecting. And it turns out that IIB gives you a command to check, and that command is called MQSICVP, which is used to perform verification tests on an integration node or to verify ODBC connections. So let's run that command to be sure our ODBC connection is working properly. Doing that is relatively straightforward. We'll go back to our server and we will type in MQSI CVP and you need to give it the name of your broker. And so that's what I've done here. And you need to also give it the name of your data source, the famous all important data source that 
DSN we've been talking about, and that's essentially what it would look like. And again, it doesn't matter if it's lowercase or uppercase, so I'll just uh, do uppercase, why not? And we'll run that. Now look at the output here. You, you need to be seeing something along these lines. Uh, user DB24 core from the security resource name CFDB will be used for the connection to data source CFDB. Verification passed for the ODBC environment. And there's lots of other interesting data here, but essentially what you really want is to be able to see this output and not see error messages. And you can read through some of these. None of these are particularly um, problematic. Now, what might not be so obvious is how do you figure out the name of your instance, right? So we said cfqm.br. How did we know that? Well, you have another IIB command you can run called mqsi service. For example, there's actually a couple of these we're going to look at, but this is the service information. So this gives you some background about the service and uh, the server. But you also want to know in terms of the instance name, which is really or the integration name, the integration node. You can use a different command to list them out, which is MQSI list. And we, I believe we looked at this before, but there you go. And you'll see cfqm.br and qmanager cfqm is running. And that's exactly how you figure out what the integration node name should be here.